In the midst of a moment, before you know it, you can go from a high moment to a place of darkness. All in an instance. Just in a second, before you know it, you can be on a spiritual high, giving God glory. And I know we don't like to talk about this. And right at the very next moment, it looks like you in the pit of darkness. Trying to figure out, God, what are you doing? How did I find myself in this place of unusual navigation when, God, I was just on a spiritual high? I obeyed you. I served you. I bragged about you. And in the middle of all of that, things changed. But I thought they were going to change and be a lot brighter, a lot easier. But in the middle of all of that, God, things just got dark all of a sudden. How do we handle dark situations? How do we handle difficult things? How do we handle being in the middle of something when everything around us has just changed, it just changed. I can no longer navigate my easy situations the way I used to. How do you handle when, when all of a sudden you are walking and having to navigate dark places? And the Bible says in the book of Genesis that the Spirit of God hovered moved hallelujah could not remain still over the face of the dark deep place and i need us as believers to understand that even when things get dark or maybe even it's darkest because walter walter hit me real quick there may even become times when things get even darker than the dark place that you in did you hear me walter did you get that cue for a second there comes a time when things get even darker than the last place that you were in God, how am I going to navigate this? How do I handle the middle of a place where I can't see what's happening anymore? How do I manage this particular place, God? God, I can't tell up from down, in from out. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing happened to your camera. Nothing's happened to your TV. Nothing's happened to your computer. Everything. I need somebody to receive this as a word right now. Everything is going to be all right. Good God Almighty. Walter, give me some light in here now. Everything is going to be, can I declare it again? Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Even in dark places, the Spirit of God is willing to move. Woo! Hallelujah. But here becomes the thing, here, here comes the thing for us is that in dark places, and dark places are very real for us, dark places for us sometimes look like places where, you know, where um, miscarriage, dark place. Oh, see y'all, you see you. I'm sorry, we don't like to talk about that, but I'm sorry, miscarriage happens to believers. Y'all could go. Dark places look like places where all of a sudden now, uh, I, I lost a, a friend or loved one. Dark place, dark place, dark place. Dark place looks like diagnosis in my body. Illnesses that, that I did not anticipate. Dark place, dark place. Dark place looks like when a loved one walks out on you and you did not anticipate it. Dark place. Huh. How do we manage dark places, dark places? And, and, and I know sometimes when we're in the middle of dark places, we try to do everything we can to grapple for light. It's, it's amazing because not everybody knew that was going to turn the lights out or one of the lights turned out. Some, some, some of y'all didn't know, huh? but I needed all of us to experience this word together. And, and, and James is even walking around the building right now finding more lights. I don't need no more light because the reality is I, a lot of times in my life, I got to navigate. Y'all, God, I feel it. I got to navigate. I got to learn how to navigate dark spots. And the truth be known for us, the only way we navigate dark spots is we allow Sean, the light of God, to be illuminated through us. When there is no light around us, we've got to let the light of God illuminate out of us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Bible says, and John says, John, first, um, John 1, um, not 1 John, John 1. And um, I got 
glasses here somewhere. I got so many markers in my Bible and none of, it's not all on the wrong page. John 1, I'm going to read John 1, just this first passage. Uh, and uh, it says, in the beginning was the word of God. In the beginning was the word, I'm sorry. And the word was with God and the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made, yeah. not even the dark place. Y'all yeah. could cut. Oh God, not even the dark place. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. Here's the thing that I love. And darkness comprehended it not. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to read those same passages of Scripture out of, and I'll, the verses of Scripture will be on your screen, and I'll make sure that we also have this translation that's for you. This is out of the West Bible. West Bible, West spells is W-U-E-S-T. And this, here's John 1, the first five verses. In this translation, it says, in the beginning, the word was existing. And the word was in fellowship with God the Father. And the word was, was as to his essence, absolute deity. This word was in the beginning in fellowship with God the Father. All things through his intermediate agency came into being. And without him, there came into being not even one thing which has come into existence. In him, life was existing. And this aforementioned life was the light of men. Here's the part that I need you to hear this real quick. I love how this translation uses this passage. It says this, and the light in the darkness is constantly shining. Y'all could. And the light in the darkness is constantly shining. So when things around you become dark, you don't have permission to get dark yourself. Y'all could. Ooh, God. You don't have permission to get dark because things are dark. You must be the light in the midst of the dark situation. And the Bible says this, I'm gonna read this the last little bit of the sentence. It says, and the darkness, somebody say, and that's from without. And the darkness did not overwhelm it. The darkness didn't overwhelm what? What's the it? The light that's in you. The darkness, regardless of how dark it gets, will not overwhelm the believer in this season. COVID-19, 2020, <laughs> everything that's happened, all that's been going on, and God says, none of it will overwhelm you. God, can I prophesy over this just for a moment that we will not, and can I, can I just declare it this way? Don't become, don't self-indict yourself because you're not being overwhelmed by what's been overwhelming others. Y'all could. Sometimes as believers, we start looking at ourselves and we start believing that, you know what? This is overwhelming everybody else, but I feel all right. It's the light of God in you, which is the life of God in you. The reason that you're not overwhelmed is because there is something coming out of you. That is the power of God, the life of God, the light of God, the light of God. And darkness can't comprehend. One translation words it differently, and it says that darkness cannot master it. It's looking to master everything else, but when it comes to you who have light, it can't master you. Doesn't know how to handle you. Doesn't know what to do with you. So then believer, hear me very clearly, hear me is what we need to then is we need to make sure that we identify our light with our being. Hear me, 
because you don't fight darkness. Y'all could. Uh, I got to say that again. You don't fight darkness. And some of us have been overwhelmed by the situation because we've been trying to fight darkness. But you don't fight darkness. You become light. Oh, God, I got to say that again. Uh, can I say it again? Just because Terry said, hmm, while he was on the keyboard, make it feel like it, was, it might have been something good. You don't fight darkness. You become light. And most of us have been trying to wrestle with darkness just to find out that it's not as tangible as I want it to be. Yo, yo, I can't grab it. I can't choke it out. That might have been a little aggressive. I don't know. I can't, I can't do whatever I need to do to defeat it. And the way you defeat darkness is not by fighting it. It is by, hear me, displacing it. You displace it by clicking the light on. You turn on the light. And it changes the situation that is at hand. You now end up in a place where though it's there, you're not overwhelmed. Somebody said to me recently, and this may seem, sound extremely personal, maybe even too personal for being online, but y'all know me, this is what I do. Somebody said to me recently, they said, Bishop G, they said, how are you feeling? That's how they said it. How are you feeling? Well, man, if I feel the way you ask me, I'm, I'm depressed. You know, and, uh, and my response to them was, was this. His grace is sufficient. Oh my. Yeah. Yes, I know what I should be feeling. Yeah. But somehow the grace of God, y'all could, the power of God, yeah. the life of God. Y'all, yeah. I, f I feel like getting up, I got to stay seated. The life of God has the ability to change your outcome. Yeah. Even if the situation doesn't change, your outcome does. Hallelujah. Ooh, Lord. Uh, so I, I want us to be, I've got so many scriptures and I've only read one. And um, I, I don't I want y'all to, uh, to, you know, to know I love God's word. Uh, but we can no longer, John 3, 19. Let's see if we can go there. John 3 and 19. I put in the pass wrong password. Uh-oh. There we go. John 3 and 19. Um, we can no longer be in the place where we are lovers of darkness. Oh, y'all got quiet in here this time. Lovers of darkness rather than light. And the reason why people love darkness rather than light is because they've become addicted to their evil deeds. Jesus. You start to like the fact of what you can do in the dark. Jesus. Oh. Jesus. Mm. But the truth of the matter is, is what's done in the dark at some point will have to come to the light. At some point, at some point, it's going to come to the light. And so... Most of us, you know, if we got some darks, we got some things going on, we like to keep it in the dark space. But, and, and I need you to be careful in this season because you realize that you're light so much. Hear this, hear this prophetic word real quick. Is that you as light also must be careful of those who you allow to be in your life as obstacles. Because, re, re, hear this, darkness can't, comprehend you, can't master you, doesn't know what to do with you. Could God, that's a great word for the believer, is that darkness never knows what to do with a believer. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and so the best that the thing that a dark, that a enemy can do with a believer is put obstacles in our way so that at least once we cast off light, there'll be shadows for others. Oh Y'all, does this make sense? Yes. So, so if, if, um, if I were, the lights are coming at me from this particular angle. Oh, I just looked into it by, by shouldn't have done that. Uh, but the lights are coming to me from over here. And if I were to hold uh, this Bible in the middle of the light, at some point you would see here a shadow. And that shadow will become now a dark spot. 
And so for believers, one of our assignments is to make sure obstacles become removed so that the light can shine the way it's designed to shine. There are people who are walking in darkness and are in relationship with believers because we keep let obstacles hang around our lives. Y'all couldn't. And we think we're shining on them, but they're really blocking. Y'all could God Almighty. Others from receiving the light. Does this make sense at all? I hope it does. Y'all can't respond. Let me, let me, uh, okay, let's, I guess I ought to read um, John 3, 19. It says, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doth evil hateth light, neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. Mm. I, 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 and we know that for us, I'm going to go to Luke real quick. And, and Luke 11, um, I was asked how many scriptures do I have? And it's a lot. Luke 11 and 34. And when you go to Luke 11 and 34, this becomes a very familiar passage for us. We understand that the way our body is designed is that our body is designed, it says, and the light of the body is in the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, mm, the whole body is full of light. Good God. But when thy eye is evil, the body is full of darkness. So when you begin to, and understand this, so we're talking about the eye, the eye becomes the place of transition. Say with me, the eye becomes the place of transition. So the eye becomes the place of transition. So when my eye can be open now to see, go to John 9, go to anywhere in scripture, go to uh, where he takes the clay and he puts it in the man's eye, go to him healing the blind man, wherever you want to go. Uh, and when you go there, you find out, go to Isaiah. And when you find out that seeing becomes critical, go to uh, Ezekiel. When he asks him, what do you see? Because seeing becomes very critical. And the truth is, is that if you can see right, then light comes. So the question is, is that what are you looking at and what do you see? What do you see? And sometimes we can be determined that we can determine that I'm not seeing right if I'm not full of light. Yeah, good Lord Almighty. If I'm not full of light, I'm not seeing right. There's, there's some way I'm not seeing God in his proper context for who he really is as my savior, as my deliverer, as my very present help, as my strong king, as the God who's strong and mighty, as the God who makes ways out of none, as the God who heals, who set free, who delivers, who, uh, who causes the uh, dead to rise up. And I'm not seeing all of it. That's the God who gives eternal life. That's the God whose promises are yea and amen. I miss, I'm not seeing that. I'm not understanding understanding that if I'm full of darkness. Yeah. I'm not seeing him right. I'm not seeing him right. I'm not seeing him right if I believe my surroundings more than I believe of what should be coming out of me. God has us in this place, believers, where we really, we really must begin to walk in the light for which he has called us. Oh, y'all know it. We, we talked about it last week. First Peter 2 and 9, right? First Peter 2 and 9, we normally talk about that part of this nation and these people that have been called out. Uh, but when he talks about us being that nation and he talks about us being that people, uh, the scripture should be on the screen when you look at it. Don't forget the last part of that clause, which says he's called us into his marvelous life called into his light. Now, God, how do I just walk into the light? No, you open your eyes and you allow his light to transform your life because you listen, because he is the light. You're not the light. I'm back in John one. You're not the light. He is the light. Uh, but, but when you see him as the light and understand that he's the light, he converts, he calls you now to be joined with him and you begin to reflect his glory. That's why we always get the glory. You reflect his glory, his radiance, his shine. You reflect that. And so believers this morning, I've got so much more that I can say through the text. 
And I want to give you the text, but I'm done preaching. There's no, no more to preach about. You've got the message. And I think the message is clear, so I'm not going to go through the message a lot. But what I am going to do is I'm going to give you some scriptures to read during this week. And I want you to go to John 8 and 12. John 8 and 12 becomes one of your scriptures. It talks about the fact that he is, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He is the light of the world. And I want you, you already have John 1 and 5. We already talked about that. And then I want you to also go to Acts 26 and 18, uh, which talks about the fact that there must be an opening of the eyes. That's Acts 26 and 18. There, there must be an opening of our eyes. And you heard, heard Luke 11 and 34 already. Um, and you've heard uh, uh, 1 Peter 2 and, and 9, which where we called into light. Uh, and you've also heard John 3 and 19, where it talks about the fact that we cannot be lovers of darkness. And I also want you to go to John chapter 12. When you get to chapter 12, start at verse 35 and work your way from 35 to at least 46. So it's John 12, 35 through 46. And we'll put these scriptures up on the screen for you so that you can have them and write them down and make sure that you're studying and reading these passages of scripture. And I want you, when you're looking, looking through it, understand that one of the things that becomes, that's the, what is, the question becomes, what is one of the questions, I should say, is God, how do I become the light? Now that I look at you and I see you, John 12 and 36 will tell us that you got to believe and that your belief about God, what you believe about God will become transformative in your life. Oh, I need to say that again. I mean, I need to say that again. What you believe about God will become transformative in your life. If you don't believe that God can, y'all, if you don't believe God will, if you don't pursue God because you know he'll do it anyway, then don't look for anything to happen in you. But if you begin to believe God, if you believe God, good God Almighty, then you can look for transformation to happen in your life. Transformation will happen in your life because of your belief system. Uh, so, so I want you to take a look at that. I'm going to end here. Terry, I'm going to end at this passage of scripture. I'm going to end at Psalm 92, verse 12. 92nd Psalm. And this one is, you're like, but Bishop G, I don't see light in this passage of scripture. Well, every scripture you read, don't have, when you talk about light, don't have to say light. But what I'm really talking about, I'm not just talking about light, I'm talking about your being. I'm talking about you being who God has created you to be. And when you go to Psalm 92, verse 12, you find this. You find that in this place, God gives promise to those who are the righteous. So when we step into our being, there's a promise that comes with our being. Good God Almighty. There's a promise that comes to our being. And the promise that comes with our being, when we go through these passages of Scripture, we see that with this promise, I should have brought this Bible out, it's all torn up. But when we see through all of this, that what he says to us is, is this. I'll go to verse 12, 92, Psalm 92, 12. It says, the righteous self shall flourish like the palm tree and shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. Here's one of my favorite parts. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. God's changing and needs us to be who he's called us to be. Those who reflect, reflect his glory. We must be 
that light that shines. If nobody takes a light and puts it under a bushel, we must be that light. What's happening with your light? Have your dark situations, the sufferings of your day, the challenges of your year, the depressing moments of your week, have they all come to the place where they have snuffed out your light? Or regardless of what happens, is your light still brilliant? I prophesy to you on this the Lord's day, let your light shine. Let your light shine. People are waiting for your light. This has been a dark year. This has been a dark year. And I need us to live our lives in a way that glorifies God regardless of what's happening in our year. Now, I didn't, I didn't plan on this. This is not in my notes. All I've got in my notes is scriptures and, 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 and things about the scripture. That's what's in my note. But Chadwick Bozeman, man, I mean, Black Panther, the king of Wakanda, Wakanda forever. Of course, he transitioned and though he passed, one of the things while we were just looking over his life over these past couple of weeks that was most impactful for me is that most of us would say that a cancer diagnosis is a dark situation. And for four years he battled cancer and in four years from my understanding, I didn't read this myself, I didn't look up the dates, heard it on you know one of the news entertainment shows that in four years he did seven movies while doing chemo now I don't know if you know any people who've gone through chemo and uh, I know a couple of them and and the type of cancer he had is supposed to be one of the most painful cancers uh, that there is and, and in the middle of all of his pain he never, in his interviews, talked about his cancer. Watch this. He always talked about what he was purposed to do. He always was on his assignment, being who he was created to be. Y'all could. He decided to be, regardless of how dark things became. I told my wife, and this is my own, just my own belief, that had he communicated and told everybody four years ago, hey, I'm in the middle of this cancer fight, that people would have, first of all, not given him as many jobs as he received. They said, oh, no, you know, he may have treatment, he may have this. Let's see who else we can offer it to. But he didn't live in his darkness. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help us. He didn't live in his darkness. He lived out of his light. He lived out of his purpose. And, and, and had he, hear me, had he even talked about his cancer and the fact that he had reached stage four and it didn't look like he was going to make it to live to see the end, had he done some interviews, then when you turned on your TV over the weekend pass and you saw all of a sudden the movie beginning to stream and, and you like, why, why they done got Black Panther on? And, and now they're about to release again 42 so that people can watch it. This would not have been the case if I told you what I was going through. Y'all could. But since I would not allow my darkness to rule, my legacy, good God Almighty, speaks even when I'm gone. It's because I decided to make my message his purpose, 
his plan, his intention. Don't be ruled by the darkness. Walk in the light. Beautiful light. You see, some of y'all don't remember that, that old song. Come where the dewdrop of mercy shine bright. Shine all around me by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. When I was growing up, that's the song that the sanctuary choir came in on. They marched in on that. <laughs> uh, I want to pray with us. I want to pray. Thank you, Terry. I want to pray that we would allow God to deal with us so that we can displace what's been around us. If you shine bright enough, if you shine bright enough, darkness won't be able to do anything with you. We had these cameras running and the truth of the matter is they turned out every light in the sanctuary except the spotlights. And so regardless of how dark it was, there was still a light on me. <laughs> so I want to pray with us. Father, we thank you so much for who you are to us. And we pray, Lord, that even as we have seen and experienced so many hard, difficult things, let your light shine out of us. Because the way we handle and navigate situations is by becoming who you've created us to be. And if you make us light, we won't be overwhelmed. We won't be mastered by the things that happen. So we declare, as you said it in your word, that these things that have happened to us have fallen out rather for the furtherance of the gospel. And we give you glory and honor for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Uh, worship team, won't you do me a favor? Won't you turn your mics on just for a second and help us if you still got it, if you can find it in the dark. Beautiful light. Come away. Sing it like you know it this time. Walk in the light, walk in. Come where the dewdrop of mercy. Lord, shine all around. For a second, but we were calming down. I thought we were gonna just stay with Jesus being the light of the world.
want to invite you now to, if you would, grab your phones, your tablets, whatever it is electronically that you grab or use to give. Uh, you may be going to your computer. Yes, you may be watching us on your smart television uh, this morning. And, and join us in an opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. I declare for us, Darian said it last week when he was giving his personal testimony, that you are gaining ground in this season. I declare you're gaining ground in this season. That there are, if you're like me, I laughed when, when one of the brothers came to me and they said, Bishop, looks like you're buying a new suit every week. No, I ain't bought nothing this year. And not buying anything this year has caused me, y'all not letting me talk to you. God's got a way of situating you so you can gain ground, make up difference. Things that you thought were of value and importance now all of a sudden take a back seat and now you are gaining ground. I declare that you are gaining ground in your life, that, that things that you are not far, oh God, I feel the Spirit of God. I declare you're not far from the promises of God. Hallelujah, that every promise in him is yea and amen, and you're about to experience the fullness of what God has for you. Good God Almighty. Woo! Be not dismayed. Whatever be tired, you better know that God will take care of you. Um, and so, so here we are. I, I encourage you to give in this season. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't get me started. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. That in this season that... God, is, His promises are so yay and amen. God is so faithful to us. I sense, I declare somebody, just put it in the chat, wherever you are, declare there's a change on the horizon. There's a change on the horizon. It, the worship team said at the end, they said, I see things turning, I see things turning. That's what y'all said. Woo, God. Woo, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Woo, Lord, Jesus is the light. coming to give we, we thank you so much for tithing this morning you are generous people and we appreciate your ability to give and your and you sticking to it we also ask if you if you just give by checks go ahead and mail your check to the church to our offices at 6419 York Road Baltimore Maryland 21212 uh, you can go to our website go to cash app Givelify all of those items and opportunities have been online and we invite you to come and give. Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. But still running over. Shall men give in your bosom. There's a promise coming to your house. I just, I feel it in my bones. There's a promise that's coming to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's yours. It's yours. You won't have to drum it up. You won't have to work it up. The promises of God are sure. Hallelujah. And they're coming to your house. They're coming to your house. Hallelujah. We bless you for to say, thank you, Jesus. Faithful is our God. Faithful is our God. Hallelujah. You have announcements that are coming up. I just need to make sure that you know and that you hear this from the uh, cat's mouth. Is that how they say it? <laughs> or whatever. Horse's mouth. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it was some animal. Uh, but as you hear right directly from the horse's mouth, um, that um, on the 13th, we will be having, we're calling it a live audience for our worship experiences that we've been recording for Sundays, on Sundays. So we're gonna be, it's going to be a limited number, so please keep, keep your ears and eyes peeled. It may be in the announcements, but keep your eyes and ears peeled for how to register because we've got to make sure we still maintain social distancing. We've got to make sure people are wearing their masks and we're going to be checking your temperatures, doing all of those things. But we want you to come in and be a part of our worshiper as the state of Maryland has now gone to phase three. But we still, we're still a little more stringent than they are. 
And so please look out for that because we want you to be a part of the worship experience. We want people to be able to see we miss our community. There is a there is a supply that you have that we haven't quite connected yet, but we're going to get it out of you. And then we also want you to be mindful that on September the 19th, which is a Saturday, our Kingdoms Family, Kingdoms family Life Renewal is still happening. And that's on September the 19th. We will be licensing and ordaining uh, people to ministry. We will be announcing uh, persons who will be stepping up in new roles and making sure the work of Kingdom Worship Center uh, is going forth with excellence. And so please make sure you are streaming with us on September the 19th as well. That's early in the morning. It's a 10 o'clock service. Um, and, and I'm so excited about what God is doing in this time and this season. So please make sure you join us at that particular time. We're, not ask, we're asking that those though who would come physically to the building at that time are the candidates and then they will be inviting their family, uh, four persons from them, their family to be a part of the audience for them so that we can maintain the social distance. So uh, we're asking that the rest of the members of the church would just join us in streaming the service. All right, listen, thank you so much for being with us today. You are the light that's reflecting the glorious light of Jesus Christ. And there's nothing that darkness can do to master or to hinder you. Hallelujah. Your light's about to shine in measures and dimensions that you haven't seen before. Good God Almighty, I declare increase to your wattage, increase to your lumens, increase to who you are. Shine, believer, shine in ways that you've never shined before. Don't allow life to snuff you out. Hallelujah. We love you. God bless you. Enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy your Sunday. We pray that today's message touched you like no other message, and we're so excited that you took the time to join us today. Thank you. Be blessed. Have a great week. Remember, God loves you even in this. That's right. God loves you even in this. Have a great week.